everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing a Korean language program Q&A for you all. If you guys are new to my channel, I moved to Korea in February 2021 and I am here on a student visa via the Korean language program that I'm in. So specifically today, we're going to be talking about the Korean language program at Seoul National University, which is the one that I've been doing lately. But there's a lot of Korean language programs in Korea and also just in Seoul alone. I will have my iPad here to look at some notes that I take so I make sure that I don't miss out on anything and also to see the questions that some of you guys have asked me over on Instagram. Without any further ado, let's get started. So I first want to do a brief summary of what the Korean language programs are. So it's usually called like KLP or KLEC for short. I know the one at SNU is called SNU LEI, which stands for Language Education Institute. So I would say most major universities in Seoul actually do have a language institute. All of the Sky universities do, so that includes SNU, Korea University, as well as Yonsei. Some other ones that are really popular, I know Sogang University's program is super popular and it's really good from what I've heard from other people. There's also a bunch of other universities in Seoul, like EY Women's University, Hanyang University, I think, has it as well. So just assume they all have their own versions of it. At Seoul National University, we of course use the Seoul National University textbooks. Hold on, let me see if I can get my textbook that I'm using right now. Okay, so these are the textbooks that we use. So this is Horde Hangugo, which is literally SNU Korean. This is the workbook and student book for level three, which is the level that I'm taking right now. I know a lot of other universities, they have like their own version of these books, but they're all pretty similar. It actually spans from level one, which is beginner beginner like you don't know any Korean at all to level six which is basically means that you're advanced in Korean and it basically correlates to the topic levels. Topic is the Korean language fluency test I would say and a lot of times you do need to take topic if you want to get a job in Korea or apply to like a PhD program here if it's not under like an international department. Level one to two is beginner, level three to four is intermediate and then level five to six is advanced. So when I first came here I did take one semester of Korean back in university but that was already like what two years ago so I didn't actually remember most of the Korean I knew like very basic hunger but besides that I didn't know that much of it and I just like forgot everything so I decided to start all the way from level one and just start fresh just so I don't have any gaps in my curriculum and honestly I think that really was the move for me because now in level three it is a lot harder but I'm glad I started all the way from beginning just so I have all the grammar structures and vocabulary under my belt. I know some people might say one is better than others just because they focus more on speaking or they focus more on writing, reading, and grammar, but I honestly don't think it really matters. I really think that for languages, it just matters if you really, really want to learn. And if you're already living in Korea and you're learning the language, you're obviously probably going to get better at it if you actually make an active effort to practice it. So the class that I'm taking right now is the regular program, and I think that's the only program as of right now in order to get like a D4 visa which is a language training visa. Basically that means you have to go to class for four hours every single day Monday through Friday just like if you were a normal student. It's a pretty intense program so it's not for the faint of heart. I honestly think it's a really great way to learn Korean really quickly but at the same time you still need to know how to practice it in a daily life but I've noticed that my Korean has gotten a lot better because of these classes so I'm very thankful. I think tuition is pretty similar across Across the board. I think actually SNU might be like a little bit more expensive than other universities, but it's pretty similar. The morning and afternoon classes are different in price. I think it's around a hundred dollar USD difference, but the one that I'm taking morning class, it's I believe 1,700,000 won, which equates to around 1.5K in US dollars. This is per session and every year has four sessions. So just correlating with the seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter. Usually the classes are in person, so you do have to be in Korea to take these classes, but because of the current situation as of October 2021, there are online classes available. So I'm in the online class right now, and the only difference between the online and offline class at the moment is that if you are in the offline class, you go to the campus to take your finals and midterms, at least the written portion. And if you're in the online class, you take the reading and writing portions and all the finals and midterms 
online. So I would say half of my class is in Korea right now and half of my class is in their home country. I think probably after the whole situation subsides, they're probably gonna move to everything being an online class just because that's how they used to do it, but who knows, they might change in the future. So the reason why I and a lot of people are taking this is because they want to come to Korea and they do provide a D4 visa, which is the student visa for Korean language training. I also know that some people do want to take the topic because they do want to settle down in Korea and live here for an extended amount of time. So they either need to take the topic so they can go to higher education such as master's degree or PhD. Or if you want to work in a Korean workplace, I think for some places you need a topic score of like higher than five or six. Don't quote me on that. I'm not really sure, but I'm pretty sure you need to be at some sort of advanced level of Korean to work in Korean corporate. For SNU specifically, these are the requirements as of October 2021 is that you need to have a high school diploma or higher. You also need to write a statement of purpose. So basically, what's the reason you want to go to SNU LDI and what's the reason you want to learn the Korean language? Kind of like a college essay, an admission essay. You also need to attach your resume as well as an official transcript. I know for some countries, you might need to notarize that, but I didn't need to notarize it just because my entire transcript was in English and I am applying for the visa in the US. You also need a scan of your passport and make sure your passport is up to date. There also is an application fee of around 60,000 won and this is really important. So this is a big one. If you want a D4 visa under at least SNU LEI, you need to show a bank statement and that bank statement needs to show that you have $10,000 USD or more within the last 30 days in the bank. For me, at least, I know for some of you guys, it might be a lot of money and even for me, that's a lot of money but just so you guys know I did work like a whole year in corporate finance and I do make money off social media so because I knew I was gonna move to Korea I had saved up a lot of money beforehand so that was something that was possible for me but if you are like a student and you don't have access to that kind of money at least by yourself you are able to show your parents bank account if necessary there is more information on the website so I'll have a link below so you guys can get it directly from the source so when I applied, it was pretty accurate given the dates that they gave us. So I applied for the spring 2021 session and I think I submitted my application a couple of days before the deadline and I received my notification of acceptance the day that they said they were going to give out the notification of acceptance. So they're pretty on top of it in that sort of sense. So now that I've given a very long general overview, let's just move on to the question and answer portion. Also shameless plug, I do do Q and A's on my Instagram stories so go follow me there I might do more Q and A's every so often like maybe every other week so if you have more questions after this video that's probably the best way to get a response from me um we already talked about tuition and everything are there work study type programs for students or jobs that foreigners can pick up so this is a really good question and actually you can't work um, a job in Korea on a D4 visa until after six months of living here so basically you need to do two sessions in Korea without working before you can pick up like a part-time job on a D4 visa I know some of my classmates now that we've been here for over two semesters they're starting to get coffee shop jobs or some part-time jobs just to have some spending money here and there someone said comparison to American uni slash college well it's totally different because when I was in university I had so many classes of course I cared about my grades a lot more because my my situation is a little bit different from someone who's actually planning on taking the topic and planning on going to higher education. I don't think it's nearly as stressful just because I'm not going to say that my grades don't matter because I still get academic validation from getting good grades. But I will say that it doesn't feel as suffocating as it was in university where I felt like I had to get good grades because I was going to be on my GPA forever and it'll follow me forever, you know? I also really like languages and I'm pretty sure everyone in my class that had made it to like level three also really enjoys learning the language so that makes things a lot easier and being able to use it on an everyday basis while I'm living in Korea so personally I don't think it's as stressful but I guess it all depends on your university or college experience because I felt like mine was kind of stressful. Someone said, how much emphasis is there in the program for speaking? Heard Sokang is better for that. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of people's differing opinions on which KLP program they should go to when they are moving to Seoul. So there's 
The SNU one's pretty popular, but the most popular one I think would be the Sogang one. There's also one at Yonsei that's pretty popular and Iwa University. I can't say anything for the other programs because I've never done it before, but I just believe that they're all probably super similar. Yeah, they might be slightly different, but how well you do and how well you learn the language ultimately comes down to you and how you practice and if you're trying to pay attention in class or trying to use it on an everyday basis, I don't really think it matters. I want to go to SNU because I heard good things about SNU from other people that have been there and I know SNU is a very reputable school so that's why I chose it. Honestly, didn't think much about it. I just knew that it would sponsor my visa and I would learn Korean from it. Sogang might be better for speaking. I'm not sure. I don't know. I've never done it before but I I think for myself, the difference is so minute that it probably won't really matter in the long run. Just my opinion. <laughs> How much money should someone bring slash average monthly expenses? Well, they do require you to have 10,000 US dollars or more in your bank account. So I honestly think it depends on your spending habits and where you're planning to live. I personally don't live in a dorm, but I'm pretty sure if you live in a dormitory, it's probably a lot less expensive. I don't have any information on that because I don't know anyone that lives in the dorms and I don't live in a dorm but as I said I'll link everything in the description box as a further resource for you when did you actually arrive in Seoul able to go there earlier with the D4 visa I actually arrived in Seoul I think two weeks before my class started so I know some people arrived like a month before but other than that I don't know anyone who arrived earlier so you can arrive like a month before your class starts. Someone said, do you feel the tuition price was reasonable or worth it? Love your content, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, I guess like these questions are super, super subjective because obviously everyone comes from a different economical standpoint. So I can't say if I think it was reasonable or not. Compared to US tuition prices, I think it's super reasonable because you know, US tuition prices are crazy. I think it's worth it. I mean, a lot of people pay that 1.5K to 2K just for like the visa and to be able to stay here and learn Korean. Obviously, I don't recommend it if you do not have the money to or if you do plan on doing this, make sure to save enough money to be able to afford all of this. Of course, like I had a corporate job, so I had a lot saved up and I knew that I was coming to Korea, but don't just drop everything and spend all your money in your bank account. That's not super financially responsible and I'm not condoning that. I personally think the class is worth it though and that my Korean is getting a lot better because of it. Another question that I got a lot is about like the actual workload. What kind of homework do they give out to students? So for homework and workload, I think right now in level three since the beginning of intermediate, it's pretty hefty I would say. Like I'm also doing social media as my full-time job and I'm doing this as like a full-time student and it's pretty busy I would say. I have homework every single day for some sort of reading or writing purpose. I also have scripts and presentations that I need to memorize in order to be better at the whole speaking portion. We mainly focus on grammar structures, vocabulary, and presentations as well as writing short essays, I would say short paragraphs. Level 1's workload was actually super fine. It was totally okay. I thought level 1 was kind of like a breeze, but level 2 and level 3 definitely had more going on and I can't imagine what it's like in level 4 and level 5 until I get there. I would say in terms of homework and how much I spend per day for studying. I honestly used to do the homework during class. So I actually used to only spend like a few hours a week studying. But now I would say I spend around like an hour a day studying in level three. So I should probably spend more than an hour a day though. Going off of that, someone said, would you rather work as an English teacher or just go to school for learning Korean? I was actually debating this because I did want to move to Korea. I know a lot of people move to Korea from the US to be an uh, English teacher. And that is an option that I had. But you know, guys, at the end of the day, I am totally a better student than I am a teacher, especially an English teacher for little kids. I was never trained in teaching. I like little kids, but I don't know what to do when they are having a bad day or like how to stop like fights and how to discipline kids. Like that's just not in my area of expertise. Personally, I just think that I'm a much better student than I am a teacher and that I probably would enjoy going to school more than teaching kids every single day. Also, that is a full-time job, just teaching 
teaching and going to school. So I, if you guys didn't know, I did quit my corporate job back last year in 2020. So I didn't want to just like sign up for another corporate job just because I make my money now through social media. So I still need to have time to be able to film videos like this for you guys, to film videos on TikTok, try out new skincare products, do all of like the communication between brands and everything. So that's why I chose school. I also wanted to learn a new language because I think it's just so interesting. My goal in life is to speak five languages. This is just adding to that. Someone asked, is it a competitive program? And I don't actually think any of these Korean language programs are a competitive program. I honestly think it's a way for a lot of schools to make money off people who want to learn the language. And I mean, it works. I think as long as you have like all the requirements necessary, probably does help maybe to have like a bachelor's degree, but I don't think it's necessary. I think some people might even come after college during a gap year. I could be wrong, but there definitely are some people on the younger side. So I'm 24. I already thought I was on the younger side, but there are some people that are like 20, 21 years old. I just think that if you follow the requirements, it should be fine. I think I did already mention a lot about this, but people talked about, do you require a certain amount of money in your bank account? How do you afford it? Um, just like fees, how much do you save up? I talked about $10,000 in your bank account to show as a bank statement to apply for the actual program and I guess personally how I afford it is that social media is my full-time job and I used to work a corporate job right out of college so I also saved up money from that. I also got a couple of questions about what made me want to move to Korea and I answered all of that in my video that I'll like link in the cards up above but I guess TLDR um, I just needed to have a change from my life. I wanted to do something not drastic but I wanted to experience living abroad. If you guys are new to my channel I I do a lot of skincare content as well as vlogs in Korea and Korea is just a great place for beauty and skincare brands and I want to be able to connect with them in person so that's why I moved here from the US there's not too much of an explanation but definitely wanted to experience this as well as pick up a new language then versus if I learned it in the US so those were all the questions that were asked I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys have any additional questions you guys can leave them in the comments below or follow me on Instagram because I do these weekly or bi-weekly Q&A sessions on my Instagram stories so I'll definitely be able to answer you there. Let me know if you guys like this video by giving it a thumbs up. Make sure to check out my other videos if you guys do like skincare and vlogs. Make sure to subscribe for two videos every single week and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!